Today we're really going to talk about how we use parabolas in real life. So, when we were first talking about vertex form, and we talked about the A value in front of our vertex form, in front of the square term there was an A value. What does that control on the parabola? If I change that A value, what are the changes that can happen to a parabola? Which one of them, Grace? The width of the parabola. The width of the parabola. So you're saying we could have a tall, skinny parabola, or we could have a short, fat parabola, right? What's the other thing that A can change? Go for it. If it's positive or negative, can it determine if it opens upward or downward? That's right. If we're going to have an A value that is positive, we know I have an upward-facing parabola. But if A is negative, I have a downward facing parabola. And I'm going to give you a hint right now, OK? Anytime you throw something in the air, which way is that parabola facing? Down. Down. That's right. So what kind of A values are we going to be looking at for all of these projectile motions? Negative ones. We're looking for negative A values, you guys, Maddie. OK? So when we were talking about A values, I did this exact same thing, right? I took a ball. I threw it up into the air, just like that, so I could show you what different parabolas look like. And I said that every single time something gets thrown into the air, or launched into the air, or if you had a bow and arrow and you shot an arrow into the air, all of those paths would be parabolas. We call that projectile motion. Now, when we just did this, we saw different types of parabolas. Specifically, we looked at a tall, skinny parabola. And what would that mean about the A value? First of all, the A value is, what would you say, Alan? Negative. It's negative. The other thing is, if, you know, if I, I said that this was skinnier than a standard parabola, what would that mean about A? It's less than A. It would mean that it's less than, Zach's close, not less than A, because it is A, it would be less than one. what, Ruby? One. Wait. Except that it's negative, so? Negative one. It would be less than negative one. So it could be negative two, negative nine, we don't know. But that would make it downwards and skinny. And then we also took a look at a parabola that was short and fat. Okay, wider than a standard parabola. And what would that mean about the A value? Yes, we know that the A value is negative, once again. But what can you tell me about the actual number for A? What do you got, Gabby? It's between negative 1 and 0. It's between negative 1 and 0. Absolutely perfect. That's true. And all of this I illustrated by showing it to you in the air. What I didn't tell you is that's not the only parabola. There is the parabola that you see. We've been doing this, uh, probably just thrown it in the air about 10 times today alone. Let's label these axes and see what we're really talking about. So as always, we've got our independent and our dependent axis. And if you want to, you all can say that's x and y. OK, fine, fine, fine. But let's talk about physics for a second. Let's talk about the real world. What are the two things that are changing when I throw a ball up into the air and catch it in my other hand? What's one of the things that's changing, Grace? The height. And would height be, the way that I've drawn it up on the board, would height be independent or would height be dependent? Dependent. That's right. So this is height. OK? Now, how are you going to explain that other dimension, that other variable? What do you think, Zach? Width, OK, that is the width that it moves, or the distance that it moves, or the length that it moves between my two hands, but in which direction? Height is in a vertical direction. We've got some sort of horizontal displacement, a change in horizontal. I think width is a perfectly good word to use. You could also actually just say horizontal displacement. But if you're looking at the parabola, that was, in fact, the width of the parabola, right? Now, what I'm going to say is there's another parabola. And the way I'm going to illustrate it to you is I'm going to show you half of one, OK? Now, first of all, keep your eyes open. I'm going to do this a couple times. But just keep your eyes open. And first of all, watch the shape that this makes, OK? Ready? 
How many people want to say what they saw was a parabola? Nobody. What's another idea of what you just saw? What shape did you just see that make as it fell? Go for it, Maddie. A line. It looked like a line, right? You said, I saw the ball, and the ball went And I'm going to agree with you. If we actually look at vertical and horizontal displacement, that looks like a line. But I'm going to tell you there was still a parabola there. It is a parabola that you can perceive, but you can't see it, OK? So what are some other things that are going on? What's another variable that was introduced into this one? Time. Stacia, perfect. It was time. The other variable that we had was time, OK? When I let this go, it only moves vertically. It's not moving horizontally. But the other variable could be time. OK? Well, what would that one wind up looking like? OK? Well, we said we've got two variables. We've got height and time. Time is almost always which axis? X. Time is almost always independent. Very good, Ethan. OK? So this one's going to be time, which means this one is going to be height again. Awesome. This is where we're going to start. OK? Oh, I want my other glove. These are the wonderful, magical gloves that Ms. Gray gave me. And I finally can put them to good use. OK, ready? There they go. Now they're light up. Whoa, I know. It's amazing. Now, what I'm going to tell you is that whenever I have the magical glove on, that hand isn't really there. It's just there to help us with time because, quite frankly, when I drop something, it's moving so fast we can't figure out what's going on. So this is the glove that will give me special slow motion power. All right? So I'm going to show this slow motion. Okay, this time I'm going to drop it again. I want you to watch this time and think about time. Okay, here we go. Mm. Happened pretty quick, didn't it? All right. You'll notice that I held it about one Mr. Schmidt high. Okay? <laughs> I don't want to confuse things yet by giving you different variables. We're not going to talk about feet, we're not going to talk about meters, we're not going to talk about seconds. Okay? What we're going to talk about is our own set of variables that we're going to use. So we're going to say that it started at one Mr. Schmidt, and it fell one Mr. Schmidt in height. So at time zero, where is it at? One Mr. Schmidt. OK. At time zero, we can call this time zero, we are at one Mr. Schmidt. OK? So there's the point that we can draw. The other thing is I need some sort of measurement for the time. Again, I don't want to mess this up by using seconds or hours or minutes yet. I want to pick on somebody, and I think the best name that we can possibly use for this is Oleg. Okay? So I'm going to tell you that when I dropped this from a height of one Mr. Schmidt down, it took five Olegs before it hit the ground. Okay? It's a nice round number. It was exactly five Olegs. Now, somebody's out there with their little uh, stopwatch on their clock saying, Mr. Schmidt, I don't think that was five Olegs. I measured that as being between one and two seconds. Okay, fine. It was between one and two seconds, but I'm telling you that is exactly five Olegs. Okay? So, let's take a look. We've got one Oleg, two Olegs, three Olegs, four Olegs, five Olegs. What can you tell me about where was the ball at five Olegs? It was at zero. You got it. Zero. Now, here is the big thing. Here is the crux of everything that we are going to be doing today. OK? Time in Olegs. <laughs> Normally, when we convert our names into units of measurement, they a lot of times become lowercase, so that's what's going on there, just to let you know, buddy. Okay? So 
Here's the most important thing that we're going to talk about. When I drop it, does it fall at a constant rate? Yes or no? How many people think yes? How many people think no? Okay. Well, if it's not falling at a constant rate, a lot of you think it's not falling at a constant rate, what is happening? It, just explain it to me in words. In physics words, what's happening to it? Tim, give it a shot. As it falls in, it goes longer. It picks up speed from gravity. Oh, wait a second. So you're saying that for every Oleg that goes by, it's actually going faster and faster? Velocity. The velocity does what? The velocity is increasing. Uh, does anybody know? It's a physics word that some people might know. What do we call a change in velocity? Acceleration. Acceleration. So that means it's actually accelerating towards the ground. Huh. I wonder what that would look like. OK, let, let, let's think about what that would look like. If Tim was right, OK, we're going to take off. Or here's the slow motion glove. Watch what happens. If Tim was right, then when I release it, OK, I let my fingers go. And for a split second, a nanosecond, a picosecond, a teeny tiny interval of time, the smallest interval of time you can think of, it actually stands still for just a second. And then in the first Oleg, it falls a little bit of a distance. And then based on what Tim says, in the second Oleg of time, it will actually fall further than it fell in the first Oleg of time. And between the second and third Oleg of time, it would fall even farther, and then even farther. And between the fourth and fifth Oleg, it would fall the farthest. Because of the acceleration, as John says, of gravity. Well, I'll tell you, in physics, that is what's happening. But what does it look like? OK, so let's see. And I'm, I'm trying my best because I am using units of Mr. Schmitz and Oleg's. It's not the easiest units to work with. OK, but we said that it falls a little bit between the zeroth and the first Oleg. So there's a little bit of vertical displacement. And then between the first and the second Oleg, that's got to get bigger. So between the first and second Oleg, it fell for a farther distance than between the zero and first. And then farther again. And then farther again. And then it hits the ground. I know it's not perfect, and I know that you probably can't see that color from the back of the room, but that doesn't look like a line anymore. What does that look like now? Half of a parabola. Half of a parabola is absolutely right. So I said at the beginning that when I throw one of these uh, juggling balls in the air, there are secretly two parabolas. One of them is the parabola that you see. It's a change in height and a change of width of the parabola, or vertical displacement and horizontal displacement. But the second parabola, what are the two variables? Who's somebody who hasn't said something yet today? I'm going to wait for a hand. What are the two variables of the secret Parabola. You might get a hint if you look somewhere on the board. Go for it. Height and time. Height and time. Absolutely perfect. OK? So if you're looking for height and time, when this ball leaves my hand, I have thrown it. I have thrown it with my muscles. I have imparted a velocity to it. And then as it goes up, what's going to happen to that velocity? Oh, I'll put the slow motion glove back on. OK? As I throw that ball into the air, what happens to the initial velocity? Let's say I'm a superstar, right? I'm going to throw it at 100 feet per second. What's going to happen the second that it leaves my hand? What force starts acting on it again, John? Acceleration. The acceleration of? Of, uh, of what physical force? What physical gravity. force? Gravity, the acceleration of gravity. 
is going to start acting on it the second that it leaves my hand. So if it leaves my hand at 100 feet per second, then it starts slowing down and it starts slowing down and it's slowing down and it's slowing down. And for one split second, right at the tippy tippy top, what do we call that? Vertex. Vertex. It stops. For an infinitesimal amount of time, it stops. And then gravity starts pulling it back down faster, 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 faster. So when you graph those positions, you will also see a parabola. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Okay? That is everything that we've learned about parabolas up until this point has been getting us ready for this. And this equation that is probably going to look pretty familiar to you guys. We have done a lot of problems out of the book where they have asked us to use an equation that looked like this. Better marker. H of t. Ooh, function notation. Nice. H of t equals negative 1 half gt squared plus v naught t plus h naught. Anybody remember a problem like that from, I don't know, maybe 11.3? Okay. If nothing else, Ethan definitely remembers <laughs> the fact that this is h and a subscript 0, and it is definitely not an h and an o, because he is not Santa Claus, and that's the only possible place we're going with that joke. Uh, this is h naught, and you'll remember the reason why we say h naught and not h sub 0 is, first of all, it's easier to say h naught and not h sub 0. But it's also because it was British people that started saying this, and they like to use the word not to mean zero. Okay? So this is the equation that we are going to be using for everything that we do today. What I'd like to do is talk about all of the variables that you see up there. Okay? So what is one of the variables that you see in this equation? What's one of them? Go for it, Don. Height. Height. Okay. So h of t. H with respect to T in function notation. Remember, that's one variable, and that's height. Perfect. Okay? All right, what's another variable that somebody sees up there that they, they want? You don't have to identify it. You just have to tell me what the variable is. What do you got, Station? T. Cool. Any guess what T stands for? Time. Perfect. You guys have just nailed it. All right, somebody that hasn't talked yet today. Let me see another hand. It's pretty easy. All you got to do is identify a variable. V, V naught. Perfect. We've got V naught. Okay. Any idea what V naught might stand for? Velocity. And because it's not, because it's sub zero, it's the initial velocity. It is the velocity at the exact moment that the ball leaves my hand or at the exact moment that the ball gets launched from the projector, or the exact moment that the rock gets thrown from the catapult. Okay? That is the initial velocity. When it is going its very fastest right at the beginning, it might wind up going faster on the other side, but when it first leaves whatever is propelling it, what is that velocity? Awesome job, buddy. Okay. Who else sees a variable? Somebody else that hasn't talked yet today. Go for it. G. G? All right. Any idea what G might stand for based on what we just talked about? Gravity. Gravity. You got it. And here's the deal with gravity, guys. You don't have to solve for it because gravity never changes on Earth. It changes other places. If you go to different places in the universe, gravity is going to change. There's still a gravitational constant. But on Earth, things that are falling towards the Earth will always fall at 9.8 meters per second squared, or 32 feet per second squared. Okay? It's actually the exact same measurement, it's just the difference between meters and feet. 9.8 meters is roughly 32 feet. Okay? That's the way that this works. 
All right? Now, I will also say that those aren't the only two answers. Could you give me a number that was in miles per hour? Not quite, because what is miles per hour? What are the unit, or what, what type of force is, uh, what type of unit is miles per hour? Speed. It's a speed, it is a velocity. These are not miles per hour or meters per second. These are meters per second squared and feet per second squared. What would the acceleration be that goes with miles per hour? Miles per hour squared, miles per hour per hour. How fast are you speeding up? Okay, and so that's what we're talking about with acceleration. And you could do a conversion into something like miles per hour per hour, but the number would be really, really small. These are the two that we work with uh, as a standard. Okay, I've got one other thing up there that can change. What do we got, Maddie? H naught. H naught. Okay. Any ideas about what H naught might be? Ooh. Okay, Amy. It is the initial height. That's perfect. Now, why is initial height important to us? Remember, we're figuring out how much time something will be in the air or what the maximum height will be. You tell me. I'm going to try to throw these to the best of my ability. I'm going to try to throw these with the exact same initial velocity. Okay? Here's the first one. Here's the second one. Which one went higher overall? First or second? Second, second one. Duh. Why? Because I started it off at a higher place. What's going to go higher in the air? When, uh, when Ethan takes football and just standing on the ground throws that football as high in the air as he can? Or if Ethan's standing on top of the Empire State Building and he throws a football from the top of the Empire State Building, which of those two balls will have gone higher in the air? From the top of the building. Yeah, come on. You have to incorporate that into your equation if it's going to work. All right. So we've got our equation. How are we going to use this? Okay. That's where we're going to come over to the other board, and we're actually going to set up the situation. Who has been to the Grand Canyon? Okay, it's Arizona, almost everybody. <laughs> uh, anybody been there recently? Mm -hmm. Okay. December. December-ish. Did you throw any rocks into the canyon? I think I might have. You might have. Okay, <laughs> here's what we're doing. Dom is taking a trip to the Grand Canyon. You know what? He's standing on the edge of a very sheer cliff somewhere at the canyon. I don't know where it's going to be. Uh, I don't think this particular rock formation exists, but this is where Don's going to be. Okay? And he is standing on the top of this specific cliff, and he is ready to chuck a rock to the canyon below. Okay? Now we know that when he chucks this rock, there are going to be two different parabolas that we see or that we perceive. One of those is going to be the actual horizontal and vertical displacement. The other one is going to be the change in height over a change in time. Perfect. All right, so he's going to chuck that rock. And let's hope he actually hits the river, OK? Big splash. That was a big rock, Dom. Shot. Uh, okay, so we've got the two parabolas. We're not going to talk about the, the vertical displacement or the horizontal displacement one just yet. Because to do that, you need three variables. You need uh, your height, you need your width or your horizontal displacement, and you need your time. Are you going to learn a way to graph that? Yes. Pre-calc trig, you're going to come back to me. I'm going to say, guys, it's time for parametric graphing, and you are going to go, sweet. And we will actually be able to graph this in three dimensions, and it's going to be awesome. But until then, we're sticking to two, time and height. Okay? So we know that at time zero, where's the rock? 
It's leaving Dom's hand. Okay? Now, you guys are going to tell me. You're going to be the teachers for a second, and I'm going to listen to you. Based on what we've already learned this year, what are the places in the flight of this rock that I'm going to think are interesting, either mathematically or science-wise? Probably physics. What are things that I'm going to be interested in? All right, Zach. The height of when you started off. Okay, well, that's one of the things that I am going to need for any calculations that I do. I am going to need to know what is the initial height of the rock. That's one of the things I'm going to need to know before I can get started. But that wasn't quite what I was asking for. What I was asking for is in the path of the rock, in the path that the rock takes, what are places where I'm interested? You guys have answered lots. I want other people to get a shot. Okay, who else? What's, what are the things that we've solved in parabolas? What are places that are interesting? Brianna. The vertex, of course. And in, in real life, Brianna, what are the two things about the vertex that we would want to know? Yeah, we want to know what is the height of the vertex? And then what is the other question that I can ask? You still have it? You want some help? Uh, a little bit of help. A little bit of help. Maddie, what's the other thing? If it's positive or negative, right? If, it, if the vertex is positive or negative? If, if what is positive or negative? I'm not understanding what you're saying. If it's like above the x or below it, like going uh, up or opening down? Well. Anytime you throw something, your parabola is always going to open down. So if you're talking about the leading coefficient, the leading coefficient is always going to be negative. Okay? What is the other, in physics, not in math, in physics, real world, something that you could measure, what is the other thing we want to know about the vertex? Monique? At what time? Does it reach At what time does it reach the vertex? Those are the two things that we want to know. Okay? And then there's one other super massive thing that we want to know when I throw a rock and it goes all the way to the bottom of the canyon. What's the other thing I want to know? Alan? How strong is it? Okay, that's another one of the things that we need to know to solve this problem. We need to know how strong that he, he threw it. We need to know what is his initial velocity. That's absolutely right. But that's not actually in the path of the rock. There's one other place in the path that this rock takes that I really want to learn. And I don't know, maybe in this class, mm, we've learned four different ways of how to find it. Three of them in the last <laughs> month or so. What is the other part of the parabola that interests me? Go for it. Oh, not where it landed. Not where it landed, because remember, we're only talking about height and time. So what is the height that's the where. What is the height when it's on the ground? Zero. Zero. So it's not the height that we want, it's the time. How long did it take for my rock to hit the bottom of the canyon floor? Look at that. I didn't have to give you anything. You guys know all of the important ones. Now I'm going to give you one not so important. Okay. The not so important one happens all the time in math books and on standardized tests. And really, in real life, it's not so useful. Okay? The question that you'll see in textbooks and on standardized tests is after how many seconds was the rock at the same height at which it was thrown? Okay, maybe a cool thing to know, but is Dominic, when he throws the rock, does he actually count the number of seconds until it's absolutely level with where he threw it and then stop counting? No, you count until it hits the ground because you want to know how long you threw that thing in the air for. So this is one that you might have to find. Now, who is my person that absolutely loves symmetry in this class? There was one person who every time I asked a question about symmetry, they got symmetry. Somebody? Was, was it King Alan of Par or Paranat Anybody? No? Well, okay. Yeah, I thought it was Zach. Was it Zach? Was it Zach? Was it Zach? Was it Zach? <laughs> Zach, was it Zach? I don't know. Was I don't know. It? Well, Zach, I'm going to pick on you anyway. Right. One way or the other, I'm going to pick on you. Given the fact that we know that parabolas are symmetric about the vertex, I'm just going to ask you a question. If it took two seconds for the rock to get from Dom's hand to the vertex, and parabolas are symmetric, 
How long would it take to get from the vertex back down to that point? Are you including gravity? Of, of course we're including gravity. Otherwise, that rock would just keep going in the, yeah, the yeah, sky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so it's is symmetric. Remember, buddy. All right, so two. So if it takes two seconds to get from here to here, how long would it take to get from there back to the... Two more seconds. You got it, buddy. All right? So that's right. If you want to know how long it will take to get to the height that it was originally thrown, find the amount of time from here to the vertex and double it. That's all you got to do. So there, I gave you what you needed for that question out of the book, and if you ever see that in a standardized test, you're set. Okay, now let's talk about the interesting ones. Underneath your desk, you all have slates. Okay? You've got your slates, you've got a marker, you've got a napkin. If you don't have any of those things, let me know. Okay? Huh? And we are actually going to solve Dom's problem here before you get started on your homework tonight. Okay? So, here's what I am going to tell you. All right? Dom is not a major league pitcher, okay? To my knowledge, are you a major league pitcher? No, I'm not. Okay, he is not a major league pitcher, but he still throws pretty well. So I'm gonna tell you that his v naught when he threw the rock, when the rock left his hand, it was traveling at 64 feet per second, okay? It's about 43 miles per hour. Not a major league fastball, but you know, 43 miles per hour, you got it. You don't know how big that rock is. It might have been bigger than a baseball. You should throw a shot put at 43 miles an hour. <laughs> I dare you. Okay, maybe it was a big rock. You don't know, Ethan. You don't know. All right, so what's the other piece of information I have to give you? Do I have to give you G? No. Why not? Because we already know. It never changes. How do you know which one it is, though? It's Anna? Either one. You should use either. No, you can't use either one. What are these units? Yeah. B. So which of this, which of these two do I have to use? 32. 32. Because your units have to match. Okay. And the last thing that I'm going to tell you is that this imaginary cliff that I made in the Grand Canyon, I don't know where it is, but it is 1,200 feet off the bottom of the canyon floor. Okay. So we know the initial velocity. We know what we're using for gravity. We know what we're using for H naught. What I want is for everybody on their slates to start off by writing this equation, filling in everything that you know, okay? And then simplifying that for me until it is in standard form. Standard form is gonna have to look something like this. Standard form, okay? Now, the other thing is that I would suggest at, at this point, you do not include units, okay? Uh, there is some unit manipulation that we will definitely be going over when we go over this homework, okay? For right now, let me suggest that you just write this with the numbers and you don't quite worry about uh, putting those units in just yet. So go ahead and take your units out and for right now, write it just with the numbers. Okay, but when I come around and look, I don't want to see any uh, G's or V naughts or H's anymore. It needs to be an equation. Right now, you don't have an equation. We don't know. Zero. All right. Perfect. You want to simplify for me a little bit? Simplify for me a little bit. Eventually, I'm going to want you to simplify. Okay. All right. Simplify for me. Cool. All right. Looks great. I just want you to simplify for me. You're doing it. You're doing it. Looks perfect. 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 Oop. Careful. Careful. Half of 32. There we go. All right. Uh, perfect. Oh, you got to multiply those two together. You just, you forgot there. Okay. 
And I don't know why these numbers changed. So take a look at that one. Too. All right. Excellent. You can simplify for me right there if you'd like. Awesome. Don't forget your square. All right. It looks like just about everybody's there. We had some folks that had a little bit of trouble with uh, their calculations. If you need a calculator and you might need it for what is coming up, feel free to go grab one. But it looks like everybody wound up eventually getting that h of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 64 t plus 1200. Overall, you guys did great on that one. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you about two different points, okay? I'm going to ask you about the vertex, and I'm going to ask you about when this thing hits the ground. First of all, let's talk about the easier one, where it hits the ground. You guys have four ways of solving this problem. I want all four of them, and you're getting no help from me, okay? Raise hands, and I'm going to call on you, and you tell me the four ways that you could solve where this hits the ground. Okay, what's one of them? You could factor, that's one. What's one of them? Go. Fill in the blank isn't a method that we have. Completing the square is, I know what you meant, but I wanted the right words. What else do we have? The quadratic formula, the quadratic equation, definitely. And then the last one is probably the trickiest one, but it's really the very first one that we learned way, way back when, what's the last one you could do? Go for it. Substitution? No. I'll give you a hint. You could graph it. Because where you graph it, what is the same thing as the rock hitting the ground? It is your graph hitting the x-axis. So the fourth one would be graphing. I said I wouldn't help you. I helped you anyways. Why? Because I'm awesome. Okay? <laughs> All right. So I want you to pick one of those four ways. Really, of those four ways, what are the only two that you're actually going to use? Completing, Completing the, square. the square or quadratic. quadratic formula. And I want you guys to use one of those two to find where it hits the ground. Where it hits the ground, what's the height? Station. We talked about this earlier. When the ball's on the ground, what's the height? Zero. So what do I get to replace with zero? The h of t. Remember, it's h of t, not just h. So zero equals negative 16t squared plus 64t plus 1,200. All right. I want you guys to uh, use either the quadratic formula or completing the square to find the the uh, time at which it hit the ground. Okay, I will also tell you, those of you that are brave and try completing the square, the next part of this, which is finding that vertex, is going to be a whole lot easier for you. I see good completing the squares. I see some good quadratic formulas. Yeah. Uh, if you need a calculator, go grab a calculator. Cool. What do you got? Okay. Well, what did you really just do right here? You really just... And so how do you undo negative 64? There you go, buddy. Also think about, does it make sense? You know that this is going to be the height. Would it make sense that the height of the vertex is less than the height that we you threw it? No. So you got two different ways of double checking this. Is that right? All right. Mm, mm, no. You needed to factor out. You needed to factor out negative 16 at the beginning. Okay. Other than that, it looks yeah. So factor out a negative. That's going to also change this sign right here. Okay. But you are super duper duper close. And I really like your work on completing the square. You're showing your work wonderfully. We just factored out the wrong thing. Okay, I see a lot of people grabbing calculators because they're going all uh, quadratic formula on me. Okay, I've got some folks that are still working on completing the square. Who do I have that actually has an answer? Ooh, I'm coming by to check. Oh, but you haven't answered my question yet. 
My question is, after how many seconds did the rock hit the ground? You've got a beautiful, beautiful formula to find that for me, but you haven't solved it. Okay. And we all know that uh, today I am also on a time crunch. Okay. So we're going to use work from different people to help us find the last two things. Okay? All right. How are my quadratic formula errors doing? Good. Good? Mm -hmm. Is somebody getting close to a correct answer? Yes. You forgot your four in the four AC. Good, looking good. Okay, so I think I've been able to check in on just about everybody. I want to make sure that we finish this up to get you ready for your homework, okay? The people that were using the quadratic formula, they are all finding that T equals the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of b squared, not one I have memorized, b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And then they're using their calculators like absolute superstars. Okay, who's actually got an answer for me? Go for it. 10.8875 seconds. Ooh, but that wasn't the only one you found. What were the two that you found, Maddie? The other was negative 6.87. You found that T could be about negative 6.88 seconds, or you found that T could be about positive 10.88 seconds. And then why did you eliminate the negative one? Because it doesn't make sense that the ball went through Dom's hand and through the ground back down to the, uh, the canyon floor. That doesn't make sense. Okay. All right. Yeah, I know. We're running out of time. Now, for the people that did vertex form, you got this in vertex form, okay? And after the camera stops rolling, we're going to keep doing this, okay? So, uh, those of you that got this in vertex form, you can tell me the height and the time just based on the vertex. For those of you that did quadratic formula, does anybody remember the super easy trick for how you find the x value of the vertex? Go for it. Uh, negative b over 2a. Negative b over 2a. So the x value of the vertex is just negative 64 over 2 times a, negative 32. What is the x value of the vertex? 2. two. So the height the vertex happens after two seconds, and then how would you find the height after two seconds? You would plug that in, but those of you that found the vertex form, you already found it. I'm just going to hold up Ethan's work here. The vertex is at 2, 1264. Uh, so they already know that it's 1264, and we've solved it two different ways. Okay, 